Hi, and welcome back to The Drumbeat. My name is Aaron Merchant, and I lead the child care portfolio here at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation. Today, we'll be discussing how, in this day and age, even if your job or portfolio doesn't appear to have anything to do directly with child care, many people, especially those working on strengthening the American workforce, find that child care steadily grows as a priority. I've spoken with several folks at state and local chambers who join their chamber as a tax expert or maybe a workforce specialist, and through personal interest or professional necessity have quickly become child care experts and leaders. At the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, we have a small but mighty team dedicated specifically to child care policies and programs. But as you'll hear today, we have a wide range of initiatives at the Chamber Foundation, and child care is popping up in all of them. I'm thrilled to be joined today by two all-star colleagues and fellow parents of young children, uh, Shanique Street, who serves as Executive Director of Programs Focused on Economic Mobility and Corporate Partnerships, and Jamie Francis, Vice President of Policies and Programs with a focus on workforce. Shanique, if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and your program, we'd love to hear from you. Sure. Thank you, Aaron, uh, for bringing us together uh, for this important conversation. I know I frequently Teams chat both of you or ask questions in the hallway about childcare and all that comes with that, but it's nice to connect on the, pa the podcast episode. So as Aaron mentioned, I am the Executive Director of Programs at the Chamber Foundation. So here I manage the Economic Mobility Portfolio, which includes some of our small business development programs and work focused on diversity, equity, inclusion. Now, one of the signature programs that I work on is the annual International Women's Day Forum and our adjacent programs that address women's economic empowerment. So look forward to highlighting uh, the intersection of childcare issues as it relates to my portfolio. Thanks so much, Shanique. Excited to dive into that. Um, and Jamie, if uh, you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and more about your uh, work at the Chamber Foundation. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Aaron. Great to be here on the drumbeat. Um, I have the great privilege of overseeing our Talent Pipeline Management Initiative, which is a set of strategies that's meant to help equip the employer community to be clear in describing and communicating their um, critical workforce needs, including how they can be more effective partners to education and training providers. So we have a network of more than 900 people who have learned the talent pipeline management framework and are implementing it in their communities in over 30 industries, um, primarily healthcare, manufacturing, construction, information technology, financial services, but also very recently early child care. So Really excited to talk about how childcare has shown up in talent pipeline management and workforce strategies. And Jamie, you mentioned that childcare impacts your portfolio in a few different ways. Um, you know, there's a talent pipeline for any industry or sector, and childcare has an impact on that. And then, as you touched on, there's also a need for a specific talent pipeline for qualified early childhood educators and childcare providers. Um, can you? Speak on both of those points, just a little bit more about how childcare can impact any talent pipeline uh, that we're talking about, and also the, the increase in interest in childcare specific pipelines. Absolutely. So, your team has done a phenomenal job of showing just how critical childcare is to every industry. Uh, if you have any working parents um, that make up your employee base, then you might know firsthand how critical, high quality, reliable childcare is for employees. So whether you're a registered nurse who has to work um, night shift, or if you're a customer service representative who has odd hours, um, or you are a vice president of programs and policy, um, and you find yourselves with a sick kiddo at home, um, childcare is just such a pertinent and um, critical um, offering to employees so that they can feel good about going to work and making sure that their child is in a safe, happy, and healthy environment. So we see this time and time again, um, that this is a top concern for employees, that they want to make sure um, that the communities in which they live or that the job in which they have um, is one that is going to allow them to have that access to a high quality child care provider. Um, and so time and time again, we're, we're hearing from partners that the child care um, is coming up as they're trying to fill open positions um, for their most critical roles, or they're wanting to retain more of their employee base. 
Um, an incredible benefit is one in which that employee has access to some type of child care program or there's some type of incentive or benefit, um, maybe some type of stipend that's provided for child care. So we have partners who are exploring this in many different ways, but I think so often the conversation starts off with we're having difficulty filling these positions or we want to retain our talent or we're trying to increase workforce diversity um, and we don't know how to access talent that typically is not a part of our talent pipeline. Um, thinking about childcare uh, as a solution is might not be one that immediately jumps out at people, um, but once they start to understand what are some of the concerns that their employees have, um, that one typically rises to the top right alongside housing and transportation. Uh, so I think that there's no you know, surprise in this, um, in that the pandemic exas you know, revealed and exacerbated in many ways the child care crisis that so many people have long dealt with, um, not just because of early child care uh, providers closing right during, during the pandemic, but many of them didn't open. And so you've got more women who didn't rejoin the workforce um, even after we started to try to get back to some level of normalcy. Um, it you know, tended to be cheaper for some people uh, to, to stay at home um, rather than to return to work. So there are just all of these potential implications, um, but at its core is you know, high quality, great childcare programs that are accessible um, to everyday workers. And then on the other side of this, you know, we also have to think about child care providers as an industry, right? Um, as mentioned, you know, many, many uh, facilities closed over the course of the pandemic. And now as facilities reopen, we're trying to fill, you know, the child care desert that exists in so many communities. It comes down to a shortage of workers for that very critical industry. Um, my child care you know, provider uh, here in Maryland has recently posted a, a position after having somebody leave. So I think that this is something that is very, very common for child care providers to say, well, how can I get the, the great qualified talent that I need to be able to serve families in my community? And it's a tough one, right? It's a it's an industry that um, is has a, a very um, important task in terms of, of caring for people's children. It's traditionally been um, a, a job that has not paid as much as other occupations. Um, so there are real challenges associated with that. But what we've seen through one of our partners in Michigan is that by bringing together a group of child care providers that are experiencing similar pain points, as we like to call them, um, there's great strength in numbers for people to be able to collaborate as employers um, to say, well, how can we access uh, talent in a different way? How can we try to expand who it is that we're thinking of bringing into our pipelines? And this particular example that I have in, in Kalamazoo, led by my colleague Michael Evans, has done some absolutely incredible work um, to bring people in from an adult literacy center uh, to connect to these child care positions and are seeing really impressive gains in retention because they've been so thoughtful, um, not only about you know, the recruitment and the hiring process, but also the onboarding process and what they can do to try to keep this great talent uh, as part of their talent pipeline. So we're very excited to see where that goes and hopeful to have more communities come on board to use the talent pipeline management framework to try to solve for these talent challenges. Jamie, that's so exciting. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, we talk a lot about the business community being involved in child care and the talent pipeline for the business community. But your uh, point is well taken that child care providers are themselves, uh, you know, sure. business owners, business leaders, part of that business community. And so uh, very excited to follow along with what's going on in Kalamazoo and sort of see how that approach expands, bringing all these different players to the table to make sure that we've got the access to child care that we need, both, you know, for the kiddos, as you mentioned, and and also to make sure that we retain a strong workforce. Um, and Shanique, I think that your perspective is also going to be crucial in this conversation because uh, you, know, you and I were talking, you don't necessarily hear the term childcare or early childhood education, um, you know, so, some of the more um, you know, on the nose terms when it comes to, to early childhood education in your line of work. But uh, what you found is that when you sort of like trace the core back to the wall, a lot of things that you're hearing from uh, different corporations, different business leaders come back to child care. So we'd love to hear a, a little bit more about that. Certainly, certainly. And, you know, thank you, Jamie, for your response and example of what's taking place in Kalamazoo, Michigan, amongst your work uh, with a number of chambers around the country. So, of course, Erin, you and your team are the official expert on child care issues. 
I would say in my work on economic mobility, specifically as it relates to conversations around the International Women's Day Forum and our general work um, on women's economic empowerment, childcare is an issue that certainly comes up and more frequently in recent years. Uh, the co correlation between access to quality and reliable childcare and the number of women that exited the workforce as a result um, of the 2020 pandemic certainly drew significant attention um, to the issue and what it meant for businesses, large and small, and certainly the larger society. Um, it's also important to note that the importance of childcare isn't only a women's issue, but an overall family issue. Of course, you know, working on the International Women's Day Forum and Women's Economic Empowerment, I can speak from that vantage point. Um, so some developments I've noticed uh, in my work is certainly we've seen more honesty um, around the issue of childcare and what it means for families. I know that uh, in our International Women's Day Forum that took place in 2021, we had a number of executives speaking frankly about what it meant for the pandemic's impact on the lack of uh, reliable childcare with, as you mentioned, a number of childcare centers closing down, but what it meant for um, our executives uh, as they're working on their day-to-day -day while also managing, you know, kids on Zoom and, you know, trying to make sure that they're keeping up with their work and, and all that that entails with what your kid does at their childcare center or at school while you're at work. So I, I can reference the, uh, in 2023, so earlier this year, McKinsey published their report on women and, and the workplace, and this is an annual report. But one of the, the key uh, messages was the importance of flexibility for uh, women returning to the workplace, especially after many had to exit the workforce during uh, the pandemic. So flexibility was important and that, you know, covers a range of uh, issues and meaning, but certainly how can they navigate uh, the childcare access issue? How can they have more flexible hours in terms of pickups? Um, I know, for example, and I think this is standard practice, but if you have a kid in childcare and the childcare center closes at six, and you get there after six, there is a fee and that keeps <laughs> accruing as the minutes tick by. So, you know, understanding that when uh, a parent or a caretaker um, says, okay, I have to go and pick up my kid from school or daycare, you know, there are implications um, on the back end of that as well. Another thing I, I would say that I've noticed in my conversations with companies is the emphasis on childcare resources as an example of their employee engagement. So certainly as it speaks to the retention um, and uh, the retention and recruitment, uh, as Jamie mentioned in the conversation about talent pipeline, but a lot of companies want to highlight how they're working to include uh, childcare resources as an example of their key employee engagement um, methods and approach. So certainly we see this uh, gaining increased attention. Um, more companies want to highlight the work that they're doing in this space. And I think the, the candor that we've seen from many families as they've been impacted by uh, lack of childcare or access to reliable and quality childcare has helped move the conversation along and encourage the business community to continue to respond. So th those are some examples of how I'd say um, the issue has come up and how it's being addressed. Thank you so much, Nick. And so now is usually the time when I would ask you to, you know, what is something actionable or what advice would you give to chambers or business leaders uh, that they can take from this? But I think that the core message of this conversation has been that childcare is so varied and so different from one situation to the next. And sometimes you're talking about childcare or you're talking about the ways in which a lack of child care impacts your business without even realizing that you're talking about uh, child care itself. So we're going to try something a little bit different and we're going to ask our viewers to whether it's you're watching this on YouTube or on LinkedIn, uh, we invite you to leave a comment or maybe tweet at us. Um, and if you have any questions either about talent pipeline management or about economic mobility and corporate relations and how child care ties into those things, uh, drop a question in the comments, and then we will look at those questions and post a corresponding blog post uh, that answers them. Um, but I will uh, say 
before we depart today. Uh, Shanique and Jamie, do you have any resources or uh, websites or anything like that that you'd like to point folks to um, so that they can learn a little bit more about your programs? Absolutely. So if you visit the talentsupplychain.org, you mm -hmm. can learn more about how talent pipeline management is being used across the country in various um, in various industries, and we're all about collaboration. So in the case that you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at tpmlearning at uschamber.org, and we would be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, for me, I would say certainly visiting the Chamber Foundation website and taking a look at our work on economic mobility and certainly uh, taking a look at our website as it relates to our International Women's Day Forum, you can see some of the uh, upcoming events, upcoming uh, program, and some of the topics we'll be covering there. But you can also see videos of previous years and the uh, issues that have been addressed and how our partners have spoken about these key issues affecting women and girls uh, around the world. Jamie and Shanique, again, thank you both so much for your time and for your insight today. That's going to do it for us at The Drumbeat. Again, my name is Aaron Merchant, and I lead the child care portfolio at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, where one way or another, we are always looking at empowering the workforce of today and the workforce of tomorrow.